Does human endogenous retrovirus W cause multiple sclerosis? Today, we'll take a walk on the wild side and explore this fringe theory purported by Professor Gavin Giovannoni and others. Why do they think the so-called MS-associated retrovirus is the cause of the disease? What are HERVs anyway? What is the evidence they're linked to MS? And most importantly, do antiretroviral drugs treat MS, we'll take a look at some clinical trials. So without being too technical, our genetic material is DNA, which is transcribed by the cellular machinery into RNA, ribonucleic acid, which is then translated to proteins that function in the cell. But retroviruses work in reverse, hence retro. Their genetic material is RNA, and they use an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, which then makes DNA, which can actually incorporate into the host cell genome, and then use our machinery or other animals' machinery to make copies of itself and spread. And there are many retroviruses the most famous being HIV. And it turns out sometimes these viruses can get into the germ line, in other words, into the egg or sperm cells. And then in the next generation, they end up in all the cells of the organism. And then they go to the children, the grandchildren, great-grandchildren. In other words, they just become part of our genome. In other words, endogenous, hence endogenous retroviruses. It turns out this is extremely common. It ter turns out humans have around 98,000 endogenous retroviruses in our genome, and some of them are endoretroviral elements, elements because they can become mutated over time, and a lot of them don't function, they don't produce active virus, and they're super common. It turns out around 5% of our genome, so a huge percentage of our DNA is actually these retroviral elements, and some of them actually produce live virus, and they may play a role in very human diseases, including MS. And this diagram shows a retrovirus entering the cell. You can see it uses this ENV or envelope protein, which is going to be important later. Then it uses the enzyme reverse transcriptase to turn viral RNA into DNA. Then it uses this protein integrase to integrate into our genome. And then once it's in the genome, it uses our cell's machinery to make copies of itself and spread to other cells and other locations in the genome. There are a ton of different retroviruses. There's HTLV1, which causes a spinal cord disorder. There's HIV, which of course causes AIDS. But we're going to focus on human endogenous retrovirus W, HERV W, which has been linked to MS, the so-called MS-associated retrovirus. And as a brief aside, it turns out other organisms closely related to humans have very similar endogenous retroviruses. For instance, you recognize pan paniscus, in other words, bonobos, pan troglodytes, in other words, chimpanzees have a lot of the same endogenous retroviruses in similar locations in the genome, though of course there are mutations. This implies that a very distant ancestor was infected by these retroviruses, but once they become endogenous, they're so persistent, though they can acquire mutations over time. And this is part of the evidence that humans are related to other organisms, in other words, the theory of evolution. But for this discussion, we'll focus on HERV W, in other words, the MS associated retrovirus. We've known about it for a long time. It was discovered in the early 1970s, and it's estimated to have been in our genome for a long time, more than 25 million years, and it's not entirely purposeless. Some of these Curve W copies have been turned into pseudogenes that actually encode a functional envelope protein known as fusogenic membrane glycoprotein that is part of the human placenta. The placenta is the sac in pregnancy that helps to support the fetus. And here you can see staining of human placenta with Herve W envelope glycoprotein. So it's actually been used by humans. There are many reasons people think Herve W is connected to MS and may be the trigger. One, HERVW is detected in the blood and spinal fluid of people with MS. 
Also, presence in the spinal fluid of HERV-W is linked to increased risk of MS in people who already had optic neuritis. Also, in people who already have MS, it's linked to worse prognosis, more disability. HERV-W extracellular viral particles have super antigenic properties. A super antigen is something that makes the immune system less specific, less requiring of tight antigen binding, and more likely to cause inflammation. There's an interesting study on mice who were engineered to have a disease called severe combined immunodeficiency. This is an immunodeficiency which can occur in humans, a genetic disease where humans don't have any lymphocytes no B or T cells. So they infected these mice with HERV-W and they developed neurological symptoms and died quickly. Their autopsies showed overexpression of inflammatory cytokines, in other words, proteins involved in an immune cell signaling, and they had brain hemorrhages. So when immunodeficient mice get this virus, it causes injury to the brain, at least in mice. Also, expression of HERV envelope protein within immune cells may induce reactive oxygen species, free radicals, and also cytokines, again, proteins involved in immune cell signaling, causing MS inflammation. This is a study in cell culture where they took monocytes, a type of white blood cell, and exposed them to HERV-W particles and found that compared to MOC, which is the control or placebo, they had greater secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines such as TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, and interleukin-6. These are part of the T helper cell type 1 pathway known to be related to MS. This is a study of people with MS with or without HERV-W in the cerebral spinal fluid. So people with HERV-W labeled in black versus without labeled in light gray. First look at the center, you can see the number of relapses. There was a trend towards more relapses in the group with the virus. Now they organize this in a strange way. First we'll look at EDSS, this is Expanded Disability Status Scale, a measure of disability in MS research. And EDSS1 is at the beginning of the study, EDSS2 is at the end of the study, so time one and time two. And you can see there was some improvement in disability in people without the virus, but worsening of disability in people with the virus. They also looked at functional system scores. This is sort of part of the EDSS, individual functional systems like the visual system, sensory system, motor system. And you can see again before FS1 and after FS2, there's a trend towards people with the virus, with HERV-W in the cerebral spinal fluid to get worse relative to those without the virus. This study looks at HERV-W expression, what they mean is transcription. In other words, how much of this endogenous DNA gets transcribed into RNA. And they looked at blood donors, in other words, controls without MS, people with relapsing remitting MS in the middle, and people with secondary progressive MS. And you can see the data are all over the place. So for an individual person, it doesn't really mean anything. But if you look at the averages, there's a slight trend. People with MS have slightly more expression, and people with secondary progressive MS which tends to be more disabling, tend to have a little bit more transcription of this endogenous DNA than people with relapsing remitting MS. Here we're looking at the same expression, in other words, transcription of DNA into RNA of HERV-W and correlation with something called the MS severity score. This is another measure of MS disability, a more simplistic version than the EDSS. And you can see individual data points are all over the place, but there is a weak correlation. Some tendency for people with more expression of this DNA into RNA to have greater disability. Now you may be thinking to yourself, maybe it's happening in reverse. Instead of HERV-W causing MS, maybe MS, inflammation, damage to the nervous system is causing release of these viruses. And that very well could be the case. This is an in vitro study where they looked at cultured white blood cells from people who are HERV-W positive, and they exposed them to interleukins. 
proteins. Again, these are proteins that signal the immune system to be active. Interleukin-4, interleukin-6, gamma interferon, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and they found that the virus was in fact released secondary to these immune factors. Interestingly, interferon beta, and this is a drug used to treat MS, such as Avanax, beta serine, Xtavia, Plegrity, that inhibited release of the virus. Another study, not this one, showed that gamma interferon, which is a drug that was previously studied in MS, but actually turned out to make MS worse, it hurt patients, it stimulated release of the virus. So very interesting data here. And if we look at the brain itself, the connection seems to be stronger. This is a study looking at HERV W RNA, both on envelope and pull RNA. This is not just the endogenous virus. It has to be active, doing something actually transcribed into RNA. And we compare multiple sclerosis versus people with other neurological diseases like Parkinson's disease or stroke or normal brain controls, people without neurological disease, there's a huge difference in the amount of this RNA, whether it be envelope RNA or pull RNA, a massive difference between MS and controls. And if we look at individual lesions, we could look at anti-HERV-W envelope protein antibodies and see where they bind. This is a comparison between a silent lesion on the left and a chronic active lesion, and you can see a massive difference. Much more activity of these endogenous retroviruses, they're transcribed much more into RNA in the active lesions. And according to these researchers, by immunohistochemistry, there was no HERV-W envelope protein in control brains whatsoever, only in MS if you actually look at the proteins. And this picture puts it all together, how HERV-W might cause MS. You have different types of immune cells, both lymphocytes, T and B cells, but also resident cells in the central nervous system, macrophages, microglia, they have expression of this endogenous retrovirus. It's transcribed into RNA, creates live viral particles, which in turn affect the immune system, cause inflammation, cause release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which in turn damage the myelin and cause symptoms of MS. So the real question is, do antiretroviral drugs, such as drugs normally used to treat HIV, suppress HERV-W and actually benefit people with MS? Well, there's some individual case reports, in other words, anecdotes. There are people with MS and HIV who report improvement of their symptoms or long-term stability while taking antiretroviral drugs. There's also a case report of a medical student with MS who is reading this literature and decided to start taking antiretroviral therapy and reported a remission, but this isn't exactly evidence. It could be due to luck or selective reporting. It's well known that people with MS have lower rates of HIV. For instance, this case control study in Denmark found that even corrected for age, sex, region, and socioeconomic status, which is important because men are more likely to get HIV, but women are more likely to get MS. For instance, they still found a 62% decreased risk of MS in people with HIV. Also, it's been reported that people with HIV have lower expression, in other words, transcription into RNA of HERV-W envelope protein, excuse me, envelope RNA, compared to people with MS and even healthy controls. Now, there are clinical trials of antivirals in MS. There's some older studies of other antivirals like acyclovir, which were largely unsuccessful in my opinion. But what about antiretrovirals? This is the INSPIRE study. This is a before-after trial, so not a randomized controlled trial. And they use the drug raltegravir, which is isentress, an HIV drug that is an integrase inhibitor. In other words, it blocks the protein that allows integrase integration into DNA. They did it in relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Now, maybe this is not the best choice of drug because endogenous viruses are already in the DNA. So they're already integrated. So what exactly would this drug do? This was apparently just the drug company. They got to agree to fund the study. But anyway, it's a phase two trial comparing a three-month baseline period without the drug to three months while on raltegravir, 40 milligrams twice daily, only 20 participants, they were not able to demonstrate any significant difference in enhancing or active lesions, disability, or quality of life. A small, short study, but didn't seem
seem to do anything. Now I should note that raltegravir and a lot of other antiretroviral drugs don't really suppress HERV-W envelope expression even in cell culture. Perhaps efavirenz does a little bit. So these are HIV drugs. They're not really targeted against HERV-W, even though they have a lot of the same proteins. This is a study combining multiple antiretroviral drugs in cell culture, lamivudine, tenofovir, duranuvir, efavirenz, and raltegravir, and they do seem to suppress HERV-W envelope expression a little bit, but really only in people who had higher levels at the beginning. People with lower levels of expression, it stayed about the same. So again, these are HIV drugs, maybe they're not that great against HERV-W. So I have various skepticisms about this. One, HERV-W is not specific to MS. Of course, it's in our genome, but even 10% of healthy individuals without MS, according to one study, have detectable HERV-W in the cerebrospinal fluid. Also, HERVs in general, human endogenous retroviruses, not specifically HERV-W, have been linked to a lot of different conditions, ALS, cancer, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, alcoholism. Can they really cause every disease? It seems implausible to me. And I find these clinical trials with antivirals to be relatively unimpressive. And perhaps other people agree because there isn't a lot of research along these lines. This was a trial on tenofovir, an antiretroviral drug which also has activity against Epstein-Barr virus, but it was withdrawn due to lack of funding. But maybe we're barking up the right tree with the wrong dog. Maybe we need a specific therapy against HERV-W, not just recycled antiretrovirals for HIV. And that could be tamelimab, a drug in development for multiple sclerosis by Gen Neuro. GNBAC1, as it was formerly called, tamelimab is a monoclonal antibody immunoglobin G4 that specifically targets and is highly effective at neutralizing HERV-W envelope protein. And this will be the topic of next Wednesday's video. So stay tuned and please give me any feedback in the comments below.